going to talk about the certain things it should be doing when traveling because obviously with last video it, it got me a bit irritable but at the end of, this, end of the day it all starts with preparation if you prepare for the trip in advance then you don't have a lot of this stuff happening so make sure you have all your documents all the right information and everything set up in a way that it's going to make life easier for you um, prepare very simple have the right luggage are you carrying too much stuff you know for example camera equipment do you really need your DSLR when you've got like me I've got GoPros I've got my mobile phone I find now I don't really use my DSLR um, especially if we go to the Philippines because it's the hassle to carry it around and it can suffer with moisture there as well um, so don't use that as much as I would like to so don't bother carrying it next thing is organized keep yourself organized keep your paperwork organized one of the things I do with plane tickets for example is I put the the first ticket I need in my passport with, with it ready so they can just flip it open they can see your passport and just do that and scan it and away you go it just makes their life easier um, but at the same time as soon as that ticket comes back and you're on the plane and you go C 4B or whatever you then go okay and they drop that to the bottom of the bag and put the next ticket in the passport ready for the next flight um, I don't throw a ticket away because you never know when you need it because some places actually ask for your other ticket because uh, they want to know where you've come from um, don't really get that too much with the Philippines but I have had it in the Middle East um, so keep yourself organized one of the other things if you're going to Hong Kong be aware there's free water so one of the things you want to do is keep hydrated and one of the things I do recommend taking is a bottle because the water's free but there's no cups so you can have the hassle of transferring some money into Hong Kong dollars or simply uh, just buy a cup wherever you are one of these little metal bottles or whatever uh, they can look in it and do whatever there's no liquid when you get on the flight but at the same time when you get to Hong Kong and you may be sat there for a couple of hours or whatever you can just fill the thing up for free um, so yeah keep yourself organized and the same goes for limiting the amount of stuff you carry in your luggage if you don't need so much stuff don't take it uh, for example a lot of people may think that if you go in there I need a tripod for I'm going on this trip and I'm going to take a tripod have a look at CDR King online you can get a cheap crappy uh, tripod that is good enough for one trip just give it away somebody will love that when you when you leave it when you when you go I know my camera heads are on, on uh, there's a German one I've got there I mean it's 80 euro just for the camera head I don't really want to take it with me at the end of the day it's something I'll carry around at the same time if I don't use it it's a pain if I'm in a hotel I've got all this stuff that I don't really want to leave there it could be stolen so quite sit there and go do I really need this or I do I just need to limit this I'll just take this 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 and this put all that back in the cupboard um, yeah next thing is financial financially um, I recommend changing as much of your money into Philippine pesos in the Philippines that's where you get the best rates I also recognize that in Hong Kong for example um, you can change some money into the local currency so you can go to McDonald's KFC buy some gifts or whatever um, but when you do that the excess money just fold up and keep it because you got your trip back and also if you come in again you've got some money for your lunches and stuff as well so what I do recommend even if is don't change everything into Philippine pesos where you are in whatever country you are um, if you can get away with somebody actually bringing money to the airport just to cover the taxes and bits and going out for lunch or whatever and getting to the, the money changer um, I recommend doing that instead prepayment cards are also another useful tool I'm not telling you which ones to use I recommend reviewing yourself because I know you guys are from everywhere so I can't tell you which one's best for you because different cards different rates different countries um, but I do recommend having a look at prepayment cards as well because it can simplify your life you don't have to carry large amounts of cash etc etc um, next thing is recovery 
If something happened to you, how would you recover it? You might be probably thinking, well, what am I talking about? If you're in a car accident, how is your medical cover? If you were pickpocketed, how would you financially sort yourself out? These are the things you want to look at. This is why I say have medical sh cover. Because the difference in the Philippines is if you can't financially do something, it may have a severe impact. There was somebody I know, um, if they'd had more money, they would still have a left leg. They didn't have enough money, so they hacked it off. I can't be any more brutal than that. The, that's the importance of insurance. Um, if he had more money, they'd have gone to surgery. He didn't, so they took it off. Um, so it can be quite critical. Pickpocketing, prepayment cards. Get more than one. Do you need to take your bank card with you to the Philippines if you're on a two-way vacation? Is the next question. If you don't, don't take it. Put everything on the prepayment, transfer stuff online, keep two cards, and maybe some money somewhere else. You know, take a hundred dollars and keep it in your shoe, whatever. I think you, I'm not telling you where to hide your money because then everybody hides it in the same place. But keep an emergency backup. Um, if something happened to you, have you got somebody that can assist? You know, at the end of the day, you got to treat things that it's great to go there. Um, and have a fantastic holiday, which you're very likely to do, but it also is nice that if something did go wrong, you're prepared for it. It's not doom and gloom, it's preparation. So if you needed any assistance, how would you get that assistance? Call up with them and think about it. Um, Safety-wise, Philippines, if you use a lot of common sense, nothing will happen to you whatsoever. Um, an example of this is people that will go and stand under a street light and use a mobile phone to call a taxi. Sit in the restaurant and ask the guard to wave a taxi down for you. That's the best way of doing it. Um, in Banilad, there has been people that have been shot with a motorbike just right up, passenger on the back, thank you very much, takes your mobile phone. My wife's cousin had a mobile phone of the same thing under the street lamp, grabbed it and just pulled her up the street because she, she wouldn't let go of her phone. Um, security is an issue. People are all nice, friendly, happy, whatever. But bear in mind, if you're not prepared, like the girl on the last video, um, the situation can unravel very fast. But if you're prepared, you go, my wallet's been stolen. Okay, I've got another 200 pesos in my shoe, which is enough for me to get back to the, back to the hotel where I've got other another bank card, whatever. But it's about prepare, preparation. Um, I'm not gonna broaden out too much because it could go on forever on the safety aspects. There is issues around public transportation, especially when you go more provincial. That's why I prefer riding on a motorbike when I go provincial rather than having somebody else drive me. I feel safer with me in control of the vehicle. Um, but you can have like flash floods, Sometimes the roads get washed away. Sometimes there's earthquakes now and again. Ferry disasters, there has been a fair few over the last few years. Uh, not all doom and gloom, but just be prepared that not everything's up to the same usual standard you're used to. And that's the thing, I mean, the big thing about safety, you're in a different culture, different environment, different country. Prepare and understand that things may not be as clear cut as you would expect. One of the things I always do, I mean on a ferry, I always sit externally if I can and to a point where I could bail out if I wanted to. There's all these little bits and pieces I do personally. It may be over, over, um, over cautious, but it's a bit like uh, my friend Chip. Chip went down on a ferry disaster and he was swimming to the surface and you could feel people grabbing his feet and he only just made it to the surface himself. Um, so maybe it's overreaching, maybe it's not, uh, just preparation. Friendships in the Philippines, bear in mind some friendships, a lot of friendships are genuine, but there's often something that could be an ulterior motive. Um, I talked to somebody the other day about this because he, he had a 
become friends with a guy. The next thing, he, the guy's around there, his wife's around there regularly. They're eating and using his house. And then the kids are just helping themselves to stuff out the fridge. Privacy. First thing I always say is keep everyone out of your house. There's no reason for anybody to be in your house. I mean, we, my space, even Jay knows. Jay's only been in my apartment once. And, and because if you go and ask my relatives, they'll say, Matt's sleeping. No, you're not allowed up there. The privacy stuff is an issue. When we had the TV stolen um, from the, the store, it was because the TV was in the store. And I was unaware they'd put it in there. Because if I was aware, I'd have told them to take it out and do not have it in there. Because if I was going to put it in there, we'd have to be in bars and welded to the wall. Because you put it on public view. Very risky in the Philippines. Keep things limited. Don't wear expensive jewelry. Try not to stand out too much. You only stand out as a foreigner, but don't look like a wealthy foreigner. Um, but friendships, you will meet some good people out there. There is some very, very good, friendly people, and there will be people that uh, will become lifelong friends. But there is also a lot of people that are simply just looking for opportunity. And what I generally do is just treat everybody with the same level of friendship. Um, there's a lot of stuff they don't know, you know, for example, um, if I know their kids are sick, they might actually receive some money and wondering where it come from. Um, but that, that's, that's something I do personally. But you need to understand that I keep that quite private. And the reason I keep it private is it stops everybody else queuing up. Um, because I'm not there as a savior of the Philippines. Um, that's Duterte's job. Um, but ultimately, you will come across some good people and you will learn over time. And if you're there for two weeks, be aware that you will come across the happy taxi driver that you're overpaying. Uh, you will come across some very attractive women and stuff, but bear in mind, they may be married, they may be in another relationship, and it takes time to actually understand somebody fully. And if you don't take the effort and time to do that, then you could walk yourself something into something that in the future may have a detrimental issue um, affecting your life. Um, yeah, I'll leave it at that. But the reason I'm bringing this up is after seeing that last video, I just thought, oh my God, how can you go to Morocco and not understand all this stuff? It's all over the place. There's enough media on this. But with the Philippines, a lot of this stuff, all you need to do is just take your time assess everything, get organized, get everything, get your ducks in a row before you go, because then you're prepared for everything. Um, because once you get to that point, you're very likely to have no issues. Thanks for watching.